I wanted to put a level sense alarm on the uh, barrel for my dust collector and I went on, I did a search and I found a um, site, I think it was lumberjocks.com and they were talking about the banner sensor that they used for dust collector alarms and I decided what the heck, I was going to order one and, uh, you know, try it out, see if I could make it work. Well, I wound up getting it on eBay, and I ordered it from China. It was supposed to be a takeoff model that was used or something like that. When it arrived about two weeks later, it actually was a brand new sensor in the box, and um, I got it for 16 bucks, so it saved me a whole lot of money with the shipping and stuff. And then I went on Amazon, and I found this uh, little alarm that's a visual alarm in a... Um, loud beeper and I did move the wire on that to the back from coming out of the bottom and this actually is the second one that I got the first one did not work and then I had a LED 12 volt transformer left over from those old LED jobs and I bought this little box on Amazon to put it in it's a uh, it's a little box and I did make some stickers there you can see I already drilled the holes for mounting the that light and alarm on and just a you know a simple plastic box it's a little smaller than what i wanted but the price was right and then i printed up some stickers and cut them out with my cameo 3 to put on it to dress it up a little bit and i had some connectors around i had bought on amazon for another job so i had a spare one of them i was going to use for the sensor itself and they're just a little four pin microphone connector there to make it easy to unplug the sensor and then I wound up buying some a relay board for it um, on Amazon too. And I didn't really know what the uh, current draw of the that alarm and light was. So I decided it would be safe to just put an opto-isolated relay in front of it just to make sure that I wouldn't damage the sensor. And I did cut a piece of plastic to uh, mount it on to put it in the box there. And another light just indicate when the um, sensor is first powered up and what state it's in that the system is armed so um, I decided to here I'm just drilling a hole to mount the light in and I use those step drills whenever I'm drilling a plastic box like this it keeps if you try a regular drill a lot of times the plastic will shatter or crack and the, the step drills just make it real easy so you know and that's just a 12 volt LED and the relays are 12 volt uh, relays also so I got the LED mounted in there and uh, then I drilled a couple holes I actually had to drill out the sensor holes a little bigger for the bigger screws that I had to mount the sensor like that and you can see I ran the wire out the back of it and like I said the first one of these sensors that I ordered um, the light flashed, but the alarm just barely made a sound on it so I had to um, send it back and get another one second one works perfect and then the relay board I I did cut that piece of plastic there to fit the box just a piece of sixteenth of an inch uh, Lexan I had laying around and I decided instead of using hardware to mount it I was just gonna take a couple tie wraps and drill some holes and and line with the mounting holes like that and you know that way there's nothing you can get a short on or anything else so I just, uh, you know, pulled it down like that, and it worked good. Mounted it nice and tight for, you know, what it's going to do. Now, another reason I went with the relays is because I'm probably going to switch this over if it works so that the dust collector actually turns itself off when the alarm goes off. And then I made a couple of print and cut labels with the Cameo 3 to just stick on, just to remind me what things do. Then that four pin connector for the sensor, I'm just gonna put that on the bottom of the box. And same thing, I've got a you know smaller step drill here that I'm gonna use. Uh, and they, they drill these boxes nice without you doing any cracking or anything. So I just you know just drilled and then checked it and drilled and checked it until I got the uh, the right size hole in there. A uh, little small, I had to go back and drill it out again. That's where I mounted the connector, and um, then I'm going to put a 12-volt jack for the power in. It was just an old LED 12-volt uh, plug that I had left laying around. 
Now, I'm not, you know, everybody's application would be different, so I'm just kind of giving you an idea here. And the um, the wiring that comes with the sensor, you know, really it says it all. Okay, to mount that 12 volt plug in, I just uh, drilled the hole that was just a clearance for it, and then put some super glue gel on it and stuck it through the hole because I didn't have a panel mount, and it actually turned into a panel mount there, you know, in two seconds. So that's an easy way to do that. So next I'm going to solder the uh, couple wires onto this connector and these connectors just are, um, they've got like a little hollow lead go or pin going into there where you just, uh, what I like to do is just heat it up and I fill it with solder first and then I'll take the, uh, the wire itself that's going in there and I'll tin it and then once, um, you know, once it's tinned and the thing is full of solder, just heat it up so the solder melts in that little cup. Stick the wire in and uh, you've got a real good solder joint. So it only takes a second to get them soldered up right. So it's just, uh, you know, four wires in there. And um, then I'm going to solder on the other. This is the sensor side. And same thing, I'm filling up those little uh, cups with solder. And then I'm just going to tin and solder on the sensor wires so there is a little bit it was a little bit of soldering required but um you know it's, it's really fairly just something i wanted to add a connector to make it easy to to get the uh disconnect it because i really don't know didn't know if this was going to work at the time or not or how many times i'd be pulling it apart and this connector here actually just has a little little tiny phillips head screw that you stick the uh contact housing in and you know tighten the screw in there and then there's a strain relief on the cable and my cable was a little bit small so I just took a piece of uh, Tigon vinyl tubing and just stuck it on there so I'd get a good strain relief so it would clamp on the wire just to make up for the size difference and there's how it plugs into the uh thing and just you know there's just two wires there's a plus and a minus you have to make sure you get them right and uh then i put a terminal board in here just to distribute the 12 volt dc which you i mean depending on how you're going to wire it or what you're going to do you probably you may not need this and you may not even need the relays if your load is under a um 100 milliamps i think so you just have to look at the specs for the sensor and then this power supply was a, uh, it met the specs that they called for on the uh, paperwork. And, you know, it just plugs in there and everything fires up. And you can see once the sensor is active, the uh, that green light comes on. So I know it's armed, ready to go. Now, I did play with the sensor a couple times before I, uh, you know, video this. And I now have it set for 8-inch sense range. But it can go out to about 16 inches. You can see my hand gets up to about 8 inches from it. And there's a little, it's a little pot that you turn there to adjust that distance. So I figured 8 inches would be a good, uh, a good distance to have it set at for the dust barrel. And I just took the back of the box and put a little bracket on there so I could screw it to the wall. So nothing really fancy. And, you know, seeing how it's all just 12 volts in there, I'm just shoving it in there and uh, just going to put the back cover on and that's it. Later on, I might uh, I might switch the, uh, the relay around so it's 110 controlling the contactor for my dust collector, so... You know, that's another thing I may change later. But for now, this this is how I did it. So there it is. Just a, you know, a simple little box. It would have been nice if the box was a little bit bigger so the alarm didn't hang off of it. But, you know, it doesn't look bad. And it all plugs together. And um, really, uh, you know, pretty simple system to put together. And I'm just going to plug that 12 volt transformer into the uh, the same wire that powers up the contactor for my dust collector, so it comes only comes on when the collector's on. <clears throat> now it's time to mount it in the barrel, and I've got that piece of plastic I put in the front, and I figured I'm going to mount it right in there just in case uh, it doesn't work or something's wrong. I can always replace that, and you know, move on. But 
I don't know if the mounting really matters where you mount it or not, but I just decided to put it off center on that hole enough so I could actually still see in the drum and, you know, see the level in there. And the same thing, this is just a piece of polycarbonate that I put in there, and I'm just going to use a step bit to, to drill the hole. And the one thing about this sensor is it's it's got a nut on there, but there's flats on the um, that piece that sticks down in the barrel, and there's some air gaps around the sides of it and the sides of the nut. It's made for a D-shaped hole, I guess. It's not really made to be sealed in there. So I just screwed the uh, that nut on, and then I figured, okay, I'm gonna take a uh, put a nice bead of silicone all the way around the outside of this thing. To uh, make sure that I don't have any leaks that would cause a uh, possible turbulence in the area and maybe you know false alarms or stuff like that. So I just had some some of this good GE sealant here, and I'm just uh, you know just putting a little bead around here. So now I it's kind of permanently installed now, and um, you know I know there won't be any air leaks around there. And I still have to run the wires around out of the way and stuff a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to put it together and just uh, kick it on to make sure everything powers up and comes on. Now this barrel is actually, I've got it about half full now. So, it, you know, the alarm definitely won't go off. So there I've got that spot right there on the wall right next to the power panel that you actually can see from any of my tools in my shop. So I figured that way you could, uh, you'll see the strobe going off when it's full. So I'm just using a couple of those uh, Craig screws that I use for everything to mount this through that aluminum bracket that I bolted on previously. And then it's just a matter of plugging that uh, connector in for the sensor. And then the um, that 12 volt power supply, you can see I've got that plugged into the remote control. That Actually, there's a contactor in that box here that controls the dust collector on and off. And uh, when that turns on, it's going to turn on the 12 volt power supply. I just thought I'd, you know, just put it on and then uh, grab the remote and try it. And you can see it does go on and off. And luckily there were two plugs on that uh, that remote that made it easy to plug in. And it was time to really try it. So I got out a uh, bag of sawdust that I had that I've been waiting to dump in my garden. And I decided I'm going to try to suck this up at about the rate that the planer would put out sawdust. And you can see it's going in the uh, down into that drum pretty fast pretty fast pretty good um the barrel was about half full so i i i figured it wouldn't take much so i just uh you know kept playing with it and trying to keep it from getting too much at one time and uh waiting and waiting and waiting to see you know if the alarm was going to go off because i really didn't have any idea and then i started getting a hose stuck to the side of that bag and stuff and Really, I was starting to get nervous at it. Oh, gee, I must be getting close now. I didn't know how much was in there, but turns out this 55-gallon uh, drum does hold quite a bit of sawdust. It's uh, pretty amazing how much you can play with it. Yeah, you can see how much is going in there now. Now, this is a light-colored cherry sawdust that I'm using here and I'm not sure um, if walnut or anything like that will make a difference in the future so um, you know I'm gonna have to do some more testing but I just wanted something this is all I had available to uh, you know enough to fill the barrel quickly and actually uh, I started to get a little nervous at this point in time because it was quite a bit of uh, chips in there and the um, still no no noise from the alarm or anything and there it goes uh, actually it uh, it worked I couldn't believe it and I'm gonna turn off the dust collector here and turn down that turns off the alarm but eventually I'll probably wire it to just turn off the dust collector itself
So now it's time to go over and check and, you know, see where it did shut off. I had it set for just approximately 8 inches. And I figure I'm going to just pull the lid here and look in there. And it looks like, uh, looks like it's just about exactly 8 inches. So, um, this thing really is a winner. It's, uh, it's really great. I can't believe it. It worked good and, um... I'll see what it does with other color sawdust and stuff in the future, but it it looks like, you know, it was a worthwhile investment for, I think I've got about maybe 30 bucks, $35 in this so far, so, um, you know, it didn't cost me a lot with the uh, cheap sensor and stuff, and definitely works. So I thought I'd, you know, just share this with you because, you know, that sensor does actually work, and there's the wiring for it, no matter, you know, what kind of circuitry you're going to use it in, and, um, there's all the specs on it and the maximum loads and stuff so you could actually tie it in with whatever system you're using whatever remote that you're using but um you know i think i'll see how it stands up over time but i think this is a really a great addition and it was a real simple thing to build and i still have my top shop totally pulled apart and torn apart and um getting ready for the next build which is going to be a uh, a new workbench for it and UPS just got here with the uh, the actual new tops for the next build. So that will be coming up soon. It'll be coming up shortly, hopefully. And these are the, uh, the tops that I'll be using, two of them side by side. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.